it's me, Erin. Thanks for joining us on the More Love Podcast. Do not tell Rebecca, but this podcast is about empathy. She likes people to think she's dead inside, but the truth is she's a big time feeler who has truly helped me uncover that empathy is my superpower. Here she comes. Hey, bestie. Hi, love. What are you doing? Oh, just getting ready to host a podcast. A podcast? About what? A life. Our life as best friends who are more like sisters. Ah, yay! I love us and I can't wait to share our stories with the world. Especially the ones that involve us pushing each other, right? To be our most authentic selves. Oh, man. Okay. Buckle in, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Show is off the damn rails. It's off the rails. We haven't even started yet. It is off the rails. First of all, Rebecca looks over to our little timer that Scott sets up for us that we never pay attention to. And she looks at it and it says 00.33. And she goes, oh my God, it's been 30 minutes already. That's funny. 30 minutes. She wasn't that off. It's actually been 20. Stop. (laughs) Not since the timer started. Oh my god! No, but since, I, because it's normally behind my head. You usually you don't even ever it's, see because it's timer. way above, yeah yeah. But now it's there, and Scott, part, I'm like, holy crap! Scott moved it because he's like, you know what? Maybe we'll have a if higher probability. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we have a higher probability of them actually stopping on time if I move it. And then he's like, it fell off the wall. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Had to and, re- replace it. And then I say to you when you, I'm like, I have a hard stop today. <laughs> I have a meeting, and you're like, yeah, when? <laughs> I'm like, I said, wait a minute. No, you have a meeting with me and Scott after this? I know. I got to take a little break from that one. So I double book. Basically, you're double book. (laughs) I double book. You're like, Mm -hmm. I got it. So really, this podcast is supposed to start at 1045 in the morning. And you said, I got to be done by 1230. We only get an hour. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. What time is it now? It's already 1115. I don't know. I don't know. See, it's already 1115. I don't know. We we We, dicked around for 30 minutes. You know what we dicked around with? Why don't you sing everyone your song? that you got in trouble for. <laughs> well, because he said, sit up straight. And what did you say? Boobs out? Yeah. yeah. So he goes, sit up straight, boobs out. And so I went into, my back aches, my belt's too tight, my boobs shake from left to right, back to back, saw you crack, eat the back of my butt. <laughs> and I got in trouble. <laughs> I got in trouble for singing that in second grade on the seesaw. <laughs> I can imagine. And I had to go to the principal's <laughs> office and get talked to. I don't even think I knew what boobs were. No, you want to learn it. I do. I, I, got, I got like the, the theme down, yeah, yeah, but I got really got to know the word. I know. I really I know. like it. Did you I jump know. rope to that little ditty? No, in the seesaw. <laughs> up oh, and yeah. down. Yeah. 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 With, you were, with your you girlfriend. screaming it? You were screaming oh, yeah. it too? Oh, oh yeah. you have to My scream back it. My belt's too tight. <laughs> What, what is that from? I don't know. Oh, she made it up. I, I don't know. No, I did not make it up. I don't know where it's from. You know, it's like Miss Mary Mac. Oh, you know, yeah. those kind of oh, things. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Now, you had to go to the principal's office. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, and then how'd that conversation go? I don't remember. I probably didn't listen. <laughs> Miss Herzog? <laughs> no, that wasn't my name. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's right. It was Miss Becky Christopher. Becky? Tell me the song you were singing <laughs> on the playground today and then you were like my back is my butt's too tight and they were like <laughs> inside they're like that's hilarious i know but they had to be like i don't do, know do you know why that's an inappropriate song to sing did adults find that stuff to be funny in the 90s <laughs> that's a great question All right did they have a sense of humor because i'm then? pretty sure if my mom found out she'd be angry Oh, <laughs> very angry. Oh. Inappropriate. Can you imagine that phone call home? No, no, no. I don't think it went home um, because Ms. I don't Ms. remember getting in trouble. Miss Christopher, we'd like to tell you about a song that Becky was singing today on the playground <laughs> <laughs> at the age of seven. <laughs> in Big fact, trouble. We have her here. Big trouble. Yeah, they don't let her perform <laughs> it. Like her perform no, her. no good. No good. No. Nope. Oh my god. That was. But so then, because we weren't allowed to sing bad songs, then we transitioned to the monkey bars, the ones that are mm. like illegal now because they're yeah. metal and oh, yeah. super high yeah. and probably broken with the screws hanging out. Yes. We would all, all us girls would go to the top and we would fight over mm. who got to be Ariel. Oh, okay. And then everybody else was the sisters. Okay. And then we'd sing Part of Your World. Oh, very mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that didn't that's, get in trouble for that one. That's right. appropriate. Right. Okay. That that was it was kind of like King of the Mountain. Yeah, you know, like we were just, it, we were the like, mermaids. Bust a bitch down. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we were the mermaids. And you're like, and, I'm Ariel. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. 
We had to take turns. You're Ursula. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. Ursula doesn't sing that song, Part of Your World. Well, oh, that's true. That's true. We didn't sing any of those <laughs> songs. True. Heaven forbid someone Just has sing. to be Ursula. <laughs> You know what we were doing on the playground? You know, the tallest slide, the tallest mm-hmm. metal slide, Palmer Elementary oh, School oh. playground. Mm-hmm. And someone would go to the very top mm-hmm. and would pretend like they were clinging on for dear life. Like if they got to the bottom, that that was like a pit of lava. Oh, and yeah. it was all done. Mm-hmm. And so it was the other kids' turns to try and get that person's fingers unstuck. And all try way to get up them at the top. All way at the on top. On the most dangerous slides that are Absolutely. like 90 degrees Absolutely. up. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And if the sun was shining and you're wearing oh, shorts yeah. on the metal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Burn your biscuits. <laughs> you're burning your biscuits. It's absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But we and were like, the I bottom know. of the slide Don't was a dirt go. pile oh. that was hard as hell. It's stones. It's stones. <laughs> it's stones left over from some driveway project they, they did last summer. These yeah. kids today have absolutely. no clue oh, yeah, you, what you real would, plan was. <laughs> Your damn, your damn rubber wood chips. Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah, your oh, turf oh. playground. Okay. Oh, you know what else we had? Wooden ones that oh, now yeah, have the arsenic. Playground. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that one had to be taken down at yeah. one of our elementary I know. schools at Baldwin's. I know. It was the best. It was best absolutely wooden the best wooden playground. I know. But we're talking slivers. Oh, we're yeah. talking beehives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, natural elements. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Kids today. You don't know how to. Did that's you why, run back and forth? That's why kids are so soft. Right, right. Did you run back and forth on the on the um, yeah the mat no the the drawbridge thing yeah. that it's a like jingle jingle yeah. jingle yeah you're like yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and like your your foot toe got stuck yeah. in it right yep. and you right on your face. planet yeah nobody cares yeah yeah they nurse would be like that. you're fine yeah <laughs> you're fine <laughs> Oh, those were the so days. Good. Those the other the days. Thing, the other thing Rebecca said to take us off the rails really early today is she looks at me all seriousness about thirty seconds before we're about to start, and she's like, "Do we have a plan today?" Now, folks, <laughs> listen to me. I know. I I love to know what happens for you in the moment before we actually go live on air. Are you? Is it? Is Are it you asking really, me a question? Yes. Oh, is it really at that moment? Thirty seconds before is the first time you've thought to yourself. Yeah. Except oh, for today. Oh, no. what are we going to talk about? Except for today. I did think about it on the way in, okay. driving in, because well, I was listening to the episode that dropped yesterday. Yeah. And I'm like, I wonder what we're going to talk about today, because I don't have anything to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, But I didn't call you, you no. to pre-plan. So I want to be clear. It wasn't you thinking, I have some ideas of topics we could talk about today. No. It was, wow, I wonder what Aaron's going to bring up. I no, don't I didn't really even have think about much that. to say today. I didn't even think about that. I just well, thought... You were worried you might not be on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I, got yeah. Noth- I got nothing to add to the, oh. to, the, okay. to the session. Okay. And no part of you ever thought about our everyday morning phone calls? No, where because we they're call so... call each other they're just... to talk about absolutely nothing. Well, I called you... I told you yesterday, you called me and I called you back because I need to tell you about my dream. But I tried to call you numerous times, but you were busy yesterday and then I completely forgot about my dream. Okay. So okay. now you don't get to hear about it. Okay. Because I can't okay. remember. But it was really funny in the moment. Okay. I'm sure it was. It was. I, I called you yesterday to process something incredibly important before I walked into a lion's den and you didn't answer. So that's fine. You didn't call me back. No, I called you first. But you didn't call me back after I called you 300 times. <clears throat> Whatever. And then I saw some pictures online. Some pictures? Yeah, because <laughs> you were busy yesterday. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the Women Empowering Women's Lunch? Are you having feelings about that? No, you no, no. I was go? like... Did no, you want to no, go? No, I do not. No. <laughs> I don't want to go that shit. No. <laughs> and then I was like... Okay, so, so she has a reason she didn't answer. Oh, oh, <laughs> there, there's you stalking my Facebook page. What's that bitch doing? What is she doing? She better not be out walking that dog because she can talk to me while she's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Speaking of dreams, I got to tell you what happened at the Busy Bean today. Busy oh. Bean. You know, okay. this is my new coffee shop. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, now the Dunkin' Donuts isn't going to help I, us. Thank you for saying that because I, I need to really acknowledge... For anyone at Dunkin' Donuts that still listens to us, one, still a fan of Dunkin' Donuts. I got Dunkin' Donuts. I've gone occasionally to Dunkin' Donuts. I don't want my girls to think that I've just left them high and dry. But here's what happened. I went on a sugar detox and right. now hate sugar. I know. I like cannot stomach. Are you drinking the nut coffee? Like basically. Stop. It's basically Stop. some nut coffee. Try mine. 
Oh, it's going to be bad. Okay, here we go. <laughs> you don't like that? <laughs> oh, it's nasty. It is that not. It's so strong. It's like Well, there is an that's espresso the type in of there. Coffee that like sticks on your breath for days. <laughs> <laughs> like that is not a, Oh, I got to do mine now. Okay. Mm. It's not that bad. Mine still has a little bit of a something in it, but <laughs> Anyway, I did feel the need because I'm going to start talking about Busy Bean because I really mm. love Busy Bean. And then I was like, well, Dunkin Donut, my Dunkin Donuts girls are going to be upset because mm. I, I have a nicely developed relationship with my Dunkin Donuts girls. And the reason I haven't been there has nothing to do with them. It's because I couldn't stomach my normal caramel swirl latte and that I would get every again, single day. What's so interesting is you could try another coffee. <laughs> But we're not going to do that. We're going to change coffee shops because there's only one selection at the Dunkin' Donuts. So... Stop it. I don't realize these things until you say that. But you're right. That's what I get at Dunkin' Donuts. And if I don't get that at Dunkin' Donuts, then... You got to go somewhere else. There's only 75,000 different options on the menu, but it's fine. It's fine. Oh my God, it's so true. I can't. It's so true. But I then can't. I was worried. I didn't want them to feel sad, disappointed, mm. um, left, mm. you know? Mm. So I'm really happy you brought that up because I did I did want to say that today that it, it's not like I'm never going back to Dunkin' Donuts, but I'm, I really can't stomach the extra caramel swirl right now. It's too much sugar. And I'm hoping I don't go back to that because I lost some weight mm. by not having mm-hmm. sugar bombs for breakfast. I mean, you know, it's like, it's funny how that works. <laughs> but speaking of dreams, I was at the Busy Bean today. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Busy Bean in Penfield. My girl, Larissa, mm-hmm. is there. Mm-hmm. Talk to her basically every single time I'm in there. So it came up that we got podcast. Oh, okay. Okay. So we got a new listener. Okay. Now. She listens to the podcast. She tells me today, I love the freaking podcast. It's <laughs> hilarious. She's like, I had to start at the beginning because I needed to know all the things. She loves the podcast. Did and she then, read our timeline? And then, oh, I don't know if she knows about the website. Larissa, oh, Larissa, Larissa. girl. We got a website too. You got to read, read our relationship timeline. Right. Remember when I added some stuff to the timeline recently and you're like, what did you add? Why didn't you talk to me about it? I'm like, you were a part of the timeline. I don't lie on the timeline. Like, I got this. I can handle the timeline. <laughs> so anyway, I'm in there. Um, Larissa's making my coffee today. I get my breakfast bowl like I usually do. And somehow the topic came up about me being a mental health professional. And she's like, do you do a good job reading people? And I said, oh, very well. I said, I, I read people very quickly. I have a very clear sense. And I said, I have, I have a strong sense of reading souls. I can yeah. really or, uh, tell. all the things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. I can tell quickly mm-hmm. if you've murdered people, mm-hmm. <laughs> if you are a shady mother effer. Mm-hmm. I, I know immediately because mm-hmm. I can feel it. Oh, yeah. So she says that she has to trust her intuition a lot and that her intuition guides a lot of what she does. And I said, oh, that's really great. You know, tell me more about that what is it about your intuition? She's like, it's actually reverse intuition. And I said, what does that mean? And she says, she has dreams. And in these dreams, she almost predicts the future Mm -hmm. about what is going to happen. Am I sensing Larissa is going to be on this podcast? Yeah. (laughs) I said, well, as as we get to the end of this story, Uh I say to her, oh, Rebecca will know what to do about that. (laughs) Right? (laughs) So... So I basically assigned your services here. Great. So she says that if she speaks her dreams out loud, Mm -hmm. they do not come true. If she does not, they do come true. Okay. And every one of her dreams are negative, pessimistic, right? So she'll talk about... um, her significant other not doing well in a job interview. Mm -hmm. So she had this dream. He wasn't going to do well in the job interview. And she has experiences where if she doesn't speak that out loud, then in that case, he wouldn't do good on the job interview. If he, she does speak it out loud, he does do good in the job interview. 
right? You mean she just has to repeat what happened in her in her dream? Yes. Oh, okay. She needs okay. to say, this is what happened in my dream. And okay. then that somehow changes the course of what happens moving forward. Okay. She's like, however, recently I've had been having dreams about my dad and my dad passed a few years ago. <clears throat> She's like, but they're not good dreams. All he's doing is walking around aimlessly, confused, looking up like he's stuck in another dimension. Hmm. No, mm-hmm. this is this is not mm. this is not my jam. Okay? okay, but here I am standing at the busy bean. Mm-hmm. I got goosebumps. Mm-hmm. All I can imagine is her dad confused. Mm-hmm. His his soul has departed and has not made it where it's supposed to go. We got called Teresa Caputo. Well, so I was like, <laughs> I asked Rebecca what we do about that. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. I'm like, he he's stuck there. That's sad. He's stuck there. <sighs> and now I don't feel good about it. And now we need to help him. He's, he's, he's... Yeah, but if she speaks it out loud, then he's gonna figure it out. Well, that's what I said. Do we need to speak it out loud so that he can ascend? Is that, I mean... How do we get him to the next level? Because that has got to be scary as shit. Hmm. If your soul is stuck Mm -hmm. in a dimension or in a place where you're not sure, you know, Mm -hmm. Catholics, we call that purgatory. But Mm. I, in my mind, purgatory wasn't a confusing, conflictious place. Mm. It was a place where you're spending time thinking about your past actions, like, you weren't great enough, so let's spend a little more time thinking about it before we send you up to the big guy, mm. right? <clears throat> but the way she made this sound was it's like a void, mm. and he's stuck in the void. Mm. So we got to speak it out, but I'm like, who does she need to see? She got to see a hypnotherapist for that. She got to go see Teresa Caputo. <laughs> well, so dreams aren't literal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're not literal. They're they're okay. symbolic. Okay. So like when your teeth fall out, it means yes. change is coming. Or no, it means you're. It, it, it means it's a communication problem. It means you need to floss. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like okay, they're okay. it's all symbolic, and it also depends on if you do any reading about dreams. It'll talk about who are you yourself in the dream? Can you see yourself? Are you there? Are you not there? Like everything means something. Okay. So like dream interpreting. Okay. So it would be really interesting to actually talk to a real person who knows what they're talking about. I just, every time I have a dream, I Google it Hmm. and I'm like, what does this mean? But I also do that when I see animals. Oh yeah. The spirit animals. Yep. I feel very strongly about that. Remember that one time we were at a conference and a pigeon? Was no, it was the pit? seagull. No, a seagull. It was multiple Kept seagulls. landing on We were in like the window. 15th floor. Yeah. Yeah. It was, we were at the best year ever, like mm-hmm. where we were planning the year ahead mm-hmm. conference. Mm-hmm. And we are like floor 89. Yeah, we're, we we're at the top. way up there. Mm-hmm. And these seagulls just start landing. Just on your windowsill. On my windowsill that is only this big. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is not, it is not big. It Mm-mm. is not big enough for their little feet. And Mm-mm. they are landing in hordes mm-hmm. on this windowsill. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the hell is happening? Well, sure as shit. Mm-hmm. There you go. Beep, 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 beep. You start Googling, what does it mean when the seagulls land? Mm-hmm. And you read it, and I'm like, get out of here, mm-hmm. you witch. I know. I know. <laughs> What's going on? I know. Well, remember not that long ago when I had the phone call with Kelly up the street, and then the next day there was a June bug yep, the June dead bug. Yep. on my windshield. It's yep. freaking middle of winter. Yep. That's not a thing. Nope. Not okay. Nope. Remember the Blue Jays? It's not, I know. All the things. I know. All it's the things. not okay. Philip thinks I'm so nuts. <clears throat> well. <laughs> <laughs> I call him, I'm like, guess what? There was a dead never gonna believe what horse I fly <laughs> on the garbage. He's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's so uh, cute. Yesterday we celebrated 19 years together. Oh. I know. Thank you. We did our ritual sitting in the driveway drinking alcohol. Drinking some beers. Yeah. And uh, we were sitting and chatting and he's like, you know, I wish I could go back and do it all over. I go, that's so sweet. He's like, Aww. yeah, I want more time. Oh, <laughs> that's really nice. I know. I go, yeah, babe, nailing it. How many beers had he had at that point? <laughs> <laughs> was it that was 10 p.m. when but, he said that? Or, no, it yeah. was actually 7.30. Mm, mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So only 10 in at that point. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, oh, 19 that's years. Sweet. And um, what's funny is, so um, we celebrated 19 years and Sawyer, our daughter, our youngest daughter, 
was born on March 10th, but her due date was March 14th. Mm. So it was kind of funny that she would have been born, but because I had a plan C-section and I wanted her out as soon as possible, the mm. earliest I could get her out was the 10th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so about well, that, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Get, get her out. Get her out. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. In fact, put me on the cancellation list. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. No, she said, I go, can I move it up to the seventh? Because I like the number seven. She oh. goes, yes, but you have to have one of those needles that go into your stomach to to chest her lungs. And I'm like, no, we'll no. stick with the 10th. No, thanks. And she goes, but if you go into labor, you can get out early. Get her out early. Did we do everything? Oh, yeah. Everything. Yeah, right. You're drinking the hot sauce. All, drinking the castor all oil. All the things. Yeah. All the things. Yeah. <laughs> Did not work. Did not work. Did not go into labor at all. I also didn't go into labor with Taylor, so I should have known better. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. <sighs> oh, well. Here's the second thing. Now, I got to apologize here because I'm going to bring up Moose and Breezy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I swear to God, you know how people are like, wow, pay attention to who people, you know, really rag on. And that must say something about themselves. I'm really not trying to rag here. But I had the radio on oh. um, a couple of days ago. Oh. And I'm driving and Moose and Breezy is on and I'm 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 doing my best. I'm I'm giving them giving them a chance. Mm. You know, I'm really I'm really trying to embrace. I'm really trying to understand if we ever have a radio career. Like <laughs> what does that sound like? What does that look like? Right. I actually think that you and I are really perfect for radio oh. <clears throat> because they do some like little um, kitschy like game kind of things. But what we're not good at is time management. No. So but that's why we, we would be kicked Scott. off. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, every like 3.5 minutes or whatever, right. Scott's like, and so today's <laughs> episode like, is brought to like you by Oscar, Slim Jims. It's the Oscar music that comes on that's like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. Yeah, he's got like a little bell that yeah. he chimes in the back or whatever. But they do all these really like kitschy type of right. like games and right. whatever. And, oh, yeah. We're, and, we're all in for oh, that. Oh, yeah. Like um, try and beat Breezy at trivia. Mm -hmm. Right. That mm -hmm. was one of them. And I'm like, oh, my God, we would love that. Mm -hmm. That would be really great. Mm -hmm. So this one was a parent related call in oh. where the parent calls in. And the parent tells you something that their child is doing that mm. they need help working through. Okay. And then they leave the call and other parents can text in or can call in to share their feedback. Okay. Now, I'm excited about this mm -hmm. in this moment. I'm like, this is really great. I'm really interested. And then it got to the point it turned real quick and I was like I gotta go I oh. gotta I gotta switch radio stations I cannot listen to this anymore they're also not parents so that's interesting <laughs> either one of them no oh fascinating mm -hmm. when they do that's a good point because they do preface their advice with if I had kids or <laughs> I would think <laughs> you know and I'll tell you what I was a rocking good parent before I had a child oh oh I nailed it I knew everything you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I knew all the by the book things. Mm -hmm. I was very judgmental of other parents. Mm -hmm. I would see the parents with the kid who would be in the restaurant that would be crying. And I'd be like, you know what you're supposed to do in that situation, right? No. Mm. No. Then, then you have kids mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, that was sweet mm -hmm. that she thought that this is what was supposed to happen. And then I'm like giving my kid, you know, lollipops and shoving him with al applesauce and be like, I'm just trying to have a nice dinner out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it was a great parent until I became a parent and then realized that was all bullshit <laughs> that I told myself. Mm -hmm. So interesting about that. So this this mother calls in and she has a I think he must be eight, seven, eight, nine year old okay. kid. And she says that she, he's one of three children and that he's really struggling with entitlement. So my first, you know, ding, 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 this is interesting that I'm noticing is we're already naming what these behaviors are, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which is problematic to me because once you start to name a behavior, it takes on that mentality and then we don't make room for other things that might be happening. So we're already calling it entitlement, which I think is is a pretty big and bolsterous word to use. And so she says that he's entitled because they don't, they, they try their best to give him everything that he needs, but he seems incredibly ungrateful for these things. 
and that, yes, he has to work for some things, <clears throat> but he um, still expects certain things to happen for him. Then they start to talk about how he's good at basketball, but he will beat someone at basketball and then will go tell that person how much they suck at oh, basketball. Jesus. And then <laughs> that's something you would do. Absolutely <laughs> not. Something you would do. You, number one, you would never beat anyone at basketball. It's fine. You are better at sports than people think. But I beat my daughter <laughs> the other night when we played horse. Oh, excellent. And then that's she excellent. spelled horse wrong, and I oh, made okay. fun of her for oh. quite some time. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> she's like, I have H O S. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> Hoss. <laughs> I go, it's called horror. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. You kick someone when they're down. Poor, poor My girl. kids aren't entitled. <laughs> My kids are not entitled at all. This, this kid beats this other kid at basketball and then is like, you suck at basketball, right? You beat her at horse and you're like, learn how to spell. <laughs> right. Well, you're going to look like an idiot when you're on the court. Oh my God. So, and then the other example they used was that he really has a hard time when his siblings are getting praise and he is not getting praise. And I absolutely love your face right now because I can already tell we're feeling very differently about this. And that These parents are terrible parents. <laughs> oh. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> it comes down to that. Your kid is a reflection of you. I'm listen, sorry. Listen. I can't. So then all these parents start chiming in and the parents are talking about how you need to take this kid to a soup kitchen and show him what his life could be like and how good he has it, right? And then another parent's chiming in and is like, take everything from him and make him sit in a room that has absolutely nothing in it so that he can slowly but surely earn back, you know, different things. And then someone else is like, keep praising the other children around him so that he can get used to what that sounds like and then basically tell him in no uncertain terms, you're going to sit there while you're listening to, you know, your your children. I'm dying inside. <laughs> I okay. am driving down the street like I, ha I need to stage an intervention. Mm -hmm. Do I need to text in? Do I need to call in? Right. Finally a second grade teacher calls in and I'm like, oh God, there's there's hope in the world. There's hope in the world. And she says, oh God, every behavior comes from an unmet need. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, there she is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. It's just so perfect. So what is the unmet need, right? And is trying to help them understand where this might be coming from and some of the um, reactions that he's having and why he might be having those reactions. And the part that I was really struggling with is a majority of the comments that were coming in lacked such care and empathy for who this child was and took the easy way out of just saying, oh, he's an entitled brat. Yeah. Oh, he needs to go to the soup kitchen, because that's going to solve all of life's problems, right? Oh, he needs to sit there and listen to his siblings be, you know, positively reinforced, right? <clears throat> and that's what this podcast is about, is where is, where's the people, where are the parents that are saying, that sounds like he's really struggling with something, let's try and uncover what that is. It sounds like He's having a hard time with other people receiving praise. What might that say about how he feels about himself, right? I, I bring this up because I really want to know what is it that is lacking in people's level of understanding, ability to conceptualize, ability to think through this, that does not allow them to go to that next level of what is going on for fill in the blank, that child, that person, that person behind the counter at Target. What is it that's keeping people from being able to go there? Well, I think it's just they there's a problem and this is how you deal with the problem. They don't it's just like when you're you're prescribed medication, right? A lot of times you're prescribed medication to fix the symptom of mm -hmm. what's pro what the problem is, but it doesn't fix the problem. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. the symptom is the behavior. Mm -hmm. 
and they're just trying to deal with the symptom. All right, this kid needs to be chastised. This kid needs to be, you know, punished or mm-hmm. whatever. Make him work in a soup kitchen. Slap him around. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's the symptom. It's it's treating Beat the symptom. Beat the symptom and not, out of him. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's the old school. <laughs> Why? The, the, the old school is still there. It's still strong. Mm-hmm. Why? It's running for president. <laughs> <laughs> but, Why? Why? I mean, you know, my philosophy, my philosophy is I think the parents need to look at how they've raised this family, how they've raised these children and look at some of the things that are going on. So it's interesting that there's three of them, but only one of them has the issue, supposedly. Is it the middle child? I think it's the oldest. Oh, he's the oldest? Mm Mm-hmm. I could be wrong about that, but I, I thought it was the oldest. At least that's how it came through to me in the conversation. Hmm. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just parent so differently in terms of, um, you know, expectations. Like, I don't believe in baby proofing. I don't, I don't believe in any of that stuff. You just teach your kid from a very young age. You don't get to touch this, period. You don't get to have that. no. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, all behave. Things, all so, things being equal, if you have typical children, then that might be okay. But when you have someone like my child has autism, uh, you know, is right. I there, mean, there's things that no matter what you do, mm-hmm. it's not going to mm-hmm. work the same way like it would with a typical hundred percent. And and that, I don't have that experience. I have very neurotypical children yeah. who follow the rules, don't question me, don't. Yep. Cause issues like I, it, you know, so I have a very different experience, which is why I feel the way that I feel. Yep. Now, if I had a child who had a, a different need that was being met or that that was an issue, I, I would probably respond differently, but I don't. So <clears throat> but the entitlement piece is really interesting because that has to come from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like even Sawyer, her birthday was last week. How many people asked her what she wanted for her birthday? And she's like, I don't know. She couldn't come up with anything because we don't, that's just, we don't buy things all the time. We don't, I don't know. I don't know yeah, how, to, how to put it. My kids did that too. But like, it, she's just grateful for whatever she gets. Yeah. It's fine. You know, she, you, even we, with Santa, right? Um, Who? Um, somebody will say to my kids, what do you, what do you want Santa to bring you? And, and they always, they will always say, whatever he brings me, he's going to bring me whatever he wants. I'm not going to, you know, because... That's just what Santa does. Santa brings what Santa brings. <laughs> so, so you're saying that that's that is a product of your parenting. That is a product entitlement. Of how you have clarify that entitlement. A child's entitlement. Yes, I th- I think it, I think you have to start there and look at the parenting style and see. What kinds of things could be contributing to that? So what you're saying, if I'm hearing you correctly, is in that parent conversation, you want people to look at the parents and what the parents are doing to contribute First. instead of focusing on what is the child's symptoms. What are the, what, What's happening with the child? We're not going to fix the child. We need to first fix the parent. Is no, that I th- right? Not fix the parent. You need to just <laughs> analyze it. Yeah, just figure out what just the parent's analyze doing. It. You don't. Nobody's fixing anything. Part yeah. one. You you need to look at. Well, if you're constantly placating to your child's wants, needs, emotional whatever, and and kowtowing to that, and they don't have any consequences, or they don't have to wait and earn something, then. I would say that that's part of the problem. Okay. Is there still an unne- unneed met or unmet need? Probably. Right. A hundred percent. But I think all things have to be analyzed. Have you ever had to, like your kids were bullied or, or there was just one kid that was always a problem that clashed with your kid, whatever in school, you know, like no. never <laughs> happened, never happened. Not for my kids. No. So we would, we would find uh, like, one of my kids would come home and say, oh, this person's a real, you know, is bothering me doing this, doing that. Mm -hmm. And we would be like, all right, well, you know, and you tell the teacher and you tell the bus driver or whatever, and you say, hey, this is happening. And then, um, then two, three weeks later, you meet the parent of that kid. Oh, and you're like, and you're like, oh, that's why the kid's (laughs) acting like that. I've seen shows like that. Right from the asshole tree. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, So, I mean, 
a lot of it is definitely the parents but if you think about this what what things are influencing that kid now mm -hmm. tiktok mm -hmm. snapchat youtube all these videos that kids watch now mm -hmm. these little short videos there's so much just junk crap out there that who yep. knows video games but my initial question was <clears throat> i'm sorry i keep clearing my throat <coughs> i'm sorry keeps killing my throat that's still drink some water oh, we'll just from cut that out years. we'll just Why, cut you didn't that like right that? out <laughs> you didn't like that okay so my initial question though was what is keeping people from asking themselves a deeper question about what might be going on with that child so the question is more about what is keeping people from asking something deeper as opposed to going right to a solution or an opinion about what we need to do to fix this child. I don't because think they people, know any better. It, right. And people communicate the way that they want to be communicated to. And so people want a solution. Yes. Why do well, they mean, want it to be fixed? If you think about going back to the whole old school thing, right? It's only really recently that child development really started like talking about what you're talking about. Seeking what's going on here? What's what's the unmet need? But mm -hmm. before it was never like that. It was like, what's wrong with this kid? Well, because there were standard operating procedures, specifically right. when you look at standardized public school, right? Everybody sits in a in rows everybody's taught the exact same way. And if you don't fit that mold, right. you are considered Neuro disabled or a problem or, a, you know, whatever. And yeah. you're shunned. Neurodiversity wasn't even a, like, that's not even a thought. I mean, it was a thing. There were oh, sure. It was it clearly was a there. thing. It was always there. It was but just it wasn't never identified. Correct. And it wasn't. Definitely um, not respected. Right. 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 So you think that this is a, a change in pushing people to think differently about cause and effect. You think that this is a growth area where people are starting to push themselves to really look at the why behind things. And it's a change in how things were <clears throat> previously and that we're just working through it right now. We're just trying to do a better job of the understanding piece. I think it's, I think there's so many layers of complicatedness. I think often people raise their children the way that they were raised, mm -hmm. but that doesn't always work. And now you're adding in a, a partnership dynamic. If you are a two parent household, you're raising your children trying to, you know, I don't know if everybody does, but trying to compromise and, and, <clears throat> come up with effective ways. You're also comparing yourself because we have the world of social media and all the things that everybody's putting their highlight reel out there. So you don't want to be the one whose kid is an issue or whatever. Like you're, there's just the, our worlds have become so much more magnified and scrutinized and all of those things that <clears throat> you're keeping up with the Joneses in a lot of ways, you know? <clears throat> It's different yeah. than it was in the 90s yeah. when we were singing inappropriate songs on the, yeah. <laughs> right. on the right. playground, right. where now it's like some kid's going to take out their phone and be like, you're bullying me. I fucking hate that word. Hate it. Mm. <laughs> so there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, are people aware of the damage that they do when they hop to a conclusion without trying to understand what's underneath it? No, especially with kids, because I don't think people think that kids have real feelings. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. That That is why I had to change the station. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, everyone's got a real strong opinion right now on this kiddo and his behavior based on one 25 second phone call in to a radio show. Mm -hmm. And that mom is going to be listening to the feedback and the thoughts and the opinions that these people are sharing. 
And I wanted to jump through the radio because I'm like, do you understand the damage you could be causing right. by giving your shitty ass opinions mm -hmm. about knowing you bigger think, context when you don't know the bigger context? Yep. You haven't checked your own shit at the door. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to get fired up, guys. Mm -hmm. Starting mm -hmm. to get fired up. And at the end of the day, who you're impacting is that eight year old. Right. So I find myself angry about the mom who called in, right? Don't open up this kid's life to the subjectness of everyone else's opinions when we haven't given ourselves an opportunity to fully understand the picture, right? I'm mad at the people who think that their opinion is so important and wonderful that we need to call into the radio show and tell them that the kid needs to go to a soup kitchen, right? <clears throat> Let's say in this situation that we don't know, this is I don't know if this is the case or not, but that's part of my point, right? Mm -hmm. What if this kid has a past abuse history? Mm -hmm. Do you th anyone think that that maybe plays into some of this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if the father's a piece of shit? I know. And is a real so much more nasty layers. person mm -hmm. who, right, again, I don't know this family from Adam, so I don't know, but that's the point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't know, and those factors matter. Absolutely. That's what I meant when I said you have to, there's a, you have to analyze and look at yes. the huge picture before you make any sort of adjustments yes. or anything. The only mm -hmm. feedback I can hear mm -hmm. is the feedback that says every behavior is a result of an unmet need. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's not one in opinion. Mm -hmm. We know that to be true psychologically. Mm -hmm. And two, it does not give you any definitive answers about what you should do, how you should do it, what you're doing wrong, what you should be doing differently. It's simply encouraging you to look at a situation differently. Mm -hmm. It's encouraging to look at the humanness associated with that person who's sitting in front of you. Mm -hmm. And the fact that that is not the go-to makes me so angry because any conversation that is not focused on, well, what else? Why? How come? What could be contributing to these types of things continues to perpetuate hurt, trauma, angst, anxiety, all of these really negative emotions that we then want to crucify kids for later on when they become adults. Well, I think also some of it has to do with the fact that parents don't want to parent either. They don't know what that means. They don't know. They don't want to. They or don't, they don't want know to. how. I or think both. it's both. It depends. I think it's both. I think that our generation is very me focused. We're career oriented. We are doing all of these things. And the family dynamic is very neglected. Hmm. And, you know, I, I had a retreat yesterday with my with my staff and we were talking about now, granted, I I work with a group that is parent focused. I work for a dad's group and all we talk about is parenting. So mm -hmm. this is very um, in my world, in my in my site all the time. And um, we're always talking about it. And we were talking about the quote I think Mother Teresa said it and it said, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to do. People aren't doing that. People are too worried about posting crap online, getting likes, all this stupid stuff that is just a problem in, mm -hmm. in, in my world, in my mind. So um, that's why I just have a different feeling about it. But um, I think if you really step back and you looked at the values and what you're teaching your children and those kinds of things, you would have a very different outcome than, oh my God, you're so annoying. I don't want to talk to you. Go watch your stupid iPad. And you're not even aware of what they're watching. I'm okay if you're a shitty parent. Okay. I'm okay if you're a shitty parent that tells your kid, go do whatever. I want you to own that. Right. I, but then I'm you can't really, complain when your kid's an idiot. You can or your complain kid. about it so long as you're acknowledging that you've contributed to it. But that, that's, <laughs> right? the anal that's the analyzing part, right? Right. I need you to own it. I need yeah. you to know, right? I'll give you a great example. So, Scott, I didn't know that you had a child on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Um, <clears throat> Carter has ADD, anxiety, and sensory processing issues. So, uh, he's a neurodivergent kiddo, too. Mm -hmm. Again, it was a great parent. Before I had a kiddo that had some issues that I had to be like, wow, I'm 
confused about this. This mm-hmm. isn't presenting the way that I that I thought it would, mm-hmm. right? Um, I completely lost my train of thought about what I was saying. What was I talking about? You're okay with shitty parents. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's perfect. Thank you very much. Yep. Right back. Right back to where I was. So, um, I would have told you before having Carter that I was not the parent that was going to give my kid an iPad during dinner time, mm-hmm. right? Because you're going to sit with me during dinner and you're going to be focused. And we're going to be this great loving family. We're going to have great conversations and whatever. Then yeah. I had my child. Yeah. And you're not going to dinner. You're not having dinner. No one is appreciating dinner. We ain't doing shit at dinner if you're not going to have an iPad available to my child. I have tried the coloring. I have tried shrinky dinks. I've tried all of the things that you you can do at a freaking, you know, place of where it is that you're going to eat. Mm -hmm. So am I aware that I give my child an iPad and that A result of that is going to be that when it comes to dinner conversations, this is particularly when he was young, Mm -hmm. that he might not be as well adept to have those conversations later on. Absolutely. But again, you're analyzing the child. You're not doing it because he's annoying. Well, maybe you are. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. yes, that is a part of it. I'm, I'm, I'm supporting his needs, but I'm also very aware that that is not my favorite part of my parenting, but it is a part of my parenting. Mm-hmm. And when I go over to my friend Sarah's house and she's like, why are you giving your kid the iPad at, at dinner? Mm-hmm. Right. I say, because I know my child and I know we're not getting through dinner unless he has an iPad. Mm-hmm. Right. But I can be aware of that and I can be aware of the impact that that has because I can own it and I can see it and I can know, again, it's not my proudest parenting moment, mm-hmm. but I'm doing it. But you got to do what you got to do. You mm-hmm. have to adapt. Yeah. Right. Oh, my God. What you're saying is exactly why um, I generally when my mom talks to me and says, how are the kids? I say they're fine. Mm-hmm. Because if I say, well, you know, John's got this and Abby's doing this and Sean's doing this. She has an opinion and mm-hmm. her opinion. I love her. I appreciate her opinion. But her opinion comes from absolutely no background and mm-hmm. no education in my family. Mm-hmm. And, 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 the and she's kids. also not living it. And day she's, to day, and she's minute not to living minute. it, and she's applying. She's applying her experience as a as a yes, parent from right. forty years ago, fifty that's years right. ago, and that's it's right. like it doesn't. It doesn't. And to uh, my point about damage, mm-hmm. think about the damage that, and again, maybe damage is too strong of a word, but think about the impact that that can have if you have someone who has not experienced what that's like to be in your family who is saying. Well, just don't give them the iPad. Right. I don't understand, right? right. Now, right. exactly. Let's let's be real clear. Rebecca and I have had some drop down discussions about this because she has neurotypical children, and she hasn't had to deal with any of this. And there have been times in our conversation I have said to her, "Spend one week with my family and tell me that you'd do something different." We've right. been at odds with each other because I have felt that her, this is how you do it. This is the parenting style. This is how it needs to be. If I'm not doing it like that, then I'm somehow doing something wrong. Right. Right. Or I'm I'm being judged as not being a good parent. And so we've come a very long way in those conversations and those journeys where now she's very clear when she'll have a reaction to something that I'm doing that her first thought is not that stupid. Why would you do that? You know, you're really screwing him up for life. Her first thought is, you know who I trust, Aaron, to do the right thing for her child? Mm -hmm. Because, wow, I've never had to experience that before. I've never had to react in that way. I've never had to give in, you know, in a certain way. Here's, Here's a great example. Was it around Christmas time? Wherever it was, the dog went outside to take a shit. And <laughs> and Carter um, needed to go outside and pick up after the dog. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is what I know about my child. Mm-hmm. I know that if you say, get out there and pick up the dog poop, he's going to double down. He's going to stall. He's going to tell you that he'll do it on his own terms, right? right? You have some of the... Um, stubbornness come out to play right and then here we are in an all-in battle about the dog poop outside so rebecca's cleaning some squash or doing something (laughs) at the freaking at the freaking sink and i say to carter hey buddy i noticed that the dog just went to the bathroom outside um before you move on to whatever your next activity is could you just make sure that that's taken care of and he said sure mom and Rebecca said, well, way to be real assertive there, mom. Way to tell him that he needed to go outside and, you know, right. pick up the dog poop, right? And 
within, I don't know, 10 minutes, Carter, on his own terms, quietly, without announcing it to anyone, because he, again, doesn't want to give in that he's doing something that someone's asked him to do, yeah. goes outside, picks up the dog poop, puts it away, comes in and pretends like nothing happened. And I turned to her and I said, did it look like I needed to be drop down, hard ass, nasty parent with him? Or does it look like he was able to do that on on his own? And she said, that's fair. That is fair. Right. But I also didn't say you needed to be a nasty parent. You could have said, Carter, go pick up the dog poop, please. That's what, what I would have done. Right. But that doesn't work for Carter. That's but right. that's my point. Yeah. Is that's I, right. I don't have pushback yeah. in right. my experience. Right. Exactly. Now, yeah. had exactly. I have a different experience, different experience. Absolutely. But yeah. that that's the point, right? Mm-hmm. It's when people who don't have the experiences, mm-hmm. again, yeah, like yeah. you said, Moose and Breezy don't even have children. They're not even parents. Right? Yeah. yeah. Want to have a really strong opinion on what you should be doing with your child <laughs> mm-hmm. that those of us who have to have a unique experience mm-hmm. because of having neurodivergent children get really fucking pissed that one so happy that your life is so by the books and kosher that you don't have to come up with these other strategies because you know what it's exhausting for me to oh, have yeah. to come up with these 100%. strategies oh, yeah. really oh, exhausting good. so I totally get it, it feels in that moment not specifically to you I'm just saying in general 100%. it feels like real nice thanks for rubbing it in my face that you don't have to actually come up with anything creative mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. good for you good for your perfect family mm-hmm. right which is not <clears throat> it's not right <laughs> but, I, it, I, but it, it very they, much we have very different issues to those of us who <laughs> who are really trying on a regular basis. I don't, I, you can relate with this, Scott. I don't know if anyone oh, yeah. has any clue how much emotional energy it takes to have to bob, weave, change, pay attention to the mentality, you know, make sure like, okay, is he in a sensory responsive mood or a sensory avoidant mood? Right. Am I allowed to give him a hug right now? Or does he want me to be as far away as possible from him? It's exhausting. Mm-hmm. And when you are a perfectionist like myself and all you want is a happy-go-lucky family that yeah. looks very similar to other families, it can be really difficult to have to manage the ins and outs of the people calling into the radio show that says, you know what that kid needs to go to a freaking soup right. kitchen, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so I found myself having this reaction on this show that was like, God, we're doing harm. We're harming the mom. We're basically by giving those opinions saying, you dumb idiot, didn't you think you were supposed to do this, right? And then I'm mad again at the mom for calling in and asking for these opinions because I'm like, why are we asking a whole bunch of strangers how we need to process our own kids issues, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then I'm mad for the kid because I'm like, the kid's going to be on the receiving end of all of this Marushka that that doesn't have anything to do with anything has not taken any into account anything that might have previously gone on for this child. Mm -hmm. No one's taking the compassionate moment to say, wow, sounds like he's struggling. This this behavior sounds like a kid who's really trying to identify himself, to Mm -hmm. be seen, to Mm -hmm. be whatever, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if we can come from that place of compassion and we can say something as simple as, wow, I might not have reacted that way, but I don't walk in your shoes. And so I can very much appreciate that you know what you're doing because you understand your family dynamic, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That is how these conversations start to dissipate and how we start to give back the power to the people who needed to have it all along to look at themselves, to look at what they need to be doing differently and to help support these, in this case, children who are just trying to do their best with what they have available to them. Well, you just reminded me, when I think back to the olden days, when, remember those shows Super Nanny? Oh, yeah. What I loved about her was the fact that she literally came in and just spent a week with you, just yep. watched you. Yep. That was the whole purpose. Yep. Because she was looking at the children's emotional, social emotional needs. She was looking at the parents, their needs. She was looking at the style, yes. all of these things. And yes. then she would come in in a very caring, loving way and say, let me tell you. Yes. The, here's the research. Here's what I'm seeing. Let's try this. Right. Yep. And th- that's all it is. Yes. That's all it is. Yes. And that was beautiful. Right. Never, never did she come in, even in the hardest of hard scenarios. Right. Never was she laying a hand on a child. No, you don't need Never to do was any she of that. getting in a child's face. Nope. Never was she trying to be really clear about the power dynamic and the fact that she was on top. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Everything she was doing was coming from a place of understanding, caring, empathy, and joining. Yeah. A process of joining. Yep. You know? Yep. Which but I, I also love. think I also think it's okay to say no. 
you know, it's okay to be like, we're not going to ingest junk because it's junk. Mm -hmm. We're not going to eat sugar foods because it's junk and you can't, a body doesn't process that normally and then you have a reaction. It's okay to do all of those things. Absolutely. And it's okay to have expectations and it's okay to give and give and take, Mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, you may feel really strongly about homework, but maybe we just can't do it today. It's okay. There's, Absolutely. there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the way you parent. There's nothing wrong with the way I parent. Right. There's nothing wrong with expectations. There's nothing wrong with That's right. lack of expectations. But in my household, as our family, this is how we function. Yep. Right? Yes. And yes, mm-hmm. the, exactly what you just said is so perfect. Mm-hmm. In our family, this is how we function. Mm-hmm. In my family, the three of us, are rather introverted people that like to be alone a Mm -hmm. majority of the day. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that looks like on the outside? I'm upstairs in my bedroom watching TV on a Saturday when we don't have anything planned. Mm -hmm. Mark is downstairs playing MLB The Show in his office with the door closed in the basement. Mm -hmm. And Carter is sitting in our middle level with a blanket over his head watching YouTube Kids. Mm -hmm. Anyone who walks into that scenario immediately is thinking, what a disconnected family. What a non-loving why aren't family. They all I don't cards. think the heck is there. Yeah. Why aren't they doing something together? Yeah. Why aren't they yeah. doing this? And See, then, I don't think people think that. Oh, I, I am confident people do. think that. Certainly. I am confident people think that. When I say, not jokingly, I cannot go on a vacation with my family because we cannot, we do not have the personalities that allow us to vacation. Mm -hmm. The trip to Ocean City, Maryland was a phenomenal example. Mm -hmm. Mark wants to do this. I want to do this. Carter wants to do this. We were a hot disaster mess. It was horrendous. Mm -hmm. It was terrible. And we all came back and in the car on the way back as Carter's throwing up out the door because he, he has motion sickness issues like his mom and can't freaking handle it. I said, are we all clear in this car that we love each other enough to never vacation together again and what did they all say yep Mm -hmm. yep Mm -hmm. right that is i don't think that's weird maybe it's because we're i'm sorry that that happened to you thank you i wish it would have gone a different way because like we i've had we've had similar situations like when when um when my son was younger i was a stay-at-home dad Mm -hmm. and had to deal with um with his sensory issues and Mm. i was also new to winter because i grew up in florida so here i am in rochester i've never had to deal with boots and hats and gloves and mittens and jackets and shoes and the shoes and (laughs) socks and the the socks have to be on a certain way and if they slide down she freaks out god i can't oh yeah now our whole body is flaring like we're oh yeah I i know and at the time i mean nobody this was 07, 08, 09, somewhere oh, yeah. in there. We and so people didn't about know it about knew, anything. Knew. They just thought I had a kid that was an asshole. Yeah, that's right. And I'd have people looking at me like, what's wrong yeah, with you're your such kid? A what kind of a parent. piece of shit parent are you? That's you right. can't even control that's your kid. That's right. You can't even control like, your kid. Yep. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Then I would go home and drink. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh yeah. I don't drink anymore. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Because you have to cope. Because it was in like some it way. was like you have no fucking clue what I have to go. That's right. To school. Oh. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. They were like, you know, he's not doing this and he's not doing that. I said, you know why? Because he has to hold it together all day that's in school. Right. That when he gets home, that's it. That's yep. right. He's got to go. Know, you want to yep. know what a superpower is, Scott? What you just said. Mm-hmm. It is the adaptable parent who can understand the dynamics of their own relationship, family dynamic, do what's best in the best interest of their family, no matter who's in that family. Oh, yeah. And to stand by that in the face of everyone else who wants to have an opinion on what you should or should not be doing differently. Do you have, um, do you do family dinners? Do you like everybody sit around the table? And no, you, and no, you... ne- but we don't either. We we have we have um it's actually kind of funny in my house that we talk about how we very rarely sit around the table and have a meal Mm -hmm. uh usually it's at holidays but the always the story that comes up is remember the last time we decided to sit down and have it have a meal and have a dinner you know at the table and what what you made sean laugh and he spit his milk all over the table and we all couldn't eat our food (laughs) that's right that's right and that's that's what happens so we eat at tray tables Mm-hmm. You yes. know, and yes. that's what we do, and everybody's fine for it. Oh, yes. we don't even do that. 
Yeah. Sawyer eats in my bed. Eat over there. She No, literally. She eats dinner in my bed watching TV because she wants to watch what she wants to watch. Taylor eats in her bed because she wants to watch what she wants to watch. Yeah. And Philip and I eat together on the couch watching what we want to watch yeah, together. That sounds like my family, too. <laughs> Except my son, Sean, will take his food down to the basement and then never bring his plates up. Oh, yeah. That... So when you go in, oh, into yeah. his room, it's the most disgusting thing yep. in the world. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, don't you wish that we could embrace that a little bit more? I'm imagining Absolutely. a hashtag that says my beautiful and perfect family. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I would tell the story about Ocean City, Maryland and how we don't vacation anymore and everyone's OK with that. I would tell the story about how the other day um, Mark came to the top or he was sitting watching TV or something and Carter's doing who the hell knows what I'm doing dishes, whatever. And he goes and stands by the basement door and he goes, I'm having sensory overload right now. I'm going downstairs and Carter and I, without skipping a beat, clap and say, way to recognize your needs, dad, oh way God. to recognize your <laughs> needs. He goes downstairs. We're all cracking up, right? Because we're embracing the fact that that shit's hilarious. Mm-hmm. He he has never identified himself as someone who has, like, especially from hearing perspective, sensory overload. He can't handle it when the cats lick themselves. <laughs> he wants to jump out of a plane. Mm-hmm. He can't handle it when the dog has licked the water too much out of it. He's like, how's it going, June? You had enough to drink, right? <laughs> and so because that's never been identified for him before, he just is a curmudgeon who's pissed most of the time yeah. until mm-hmm. you then have a kid with sensory issues that were like oh wow look at us Mm -hmm. we're a massively sensory family and we've never known that before Mm -hmm. right so one of the things you've been able to do (laughs) earlier than most and maybe it's because you've had a rather quote-unquote typical family is that you've been able to identify the dynamics and the normalcies associated with your family you all Mm -hmm. sit on big bertha and watch tv together Mm -hmm. right you all talk about how we could live in a tiny home not a problem right my family could be in a one-bedroom Right. Home and be completely fine. But you've identified those family dynamics. Mm -hmm. But what's allowed you to do that in some ways is the privilege associated with the fact that nothing that you're doing is so far off course of a typical family that it would make anyone feel weird about it. Right. (laughs) When it comes to Scott and my family, holy cow, you know, you would. you'd But see, I don't think your families are weird. Sitcom somewhere. This morning. So I just ran out of, uh, I ran out of my cologne, my polo cologne or oh, Ralph yeah. Lauren or whatever. And um, I asked Kelly to go get me another bottle and she did. And uh, there it was this morning. I took it out of the box and I went to put it on and they changed the bottle and made it some, I don't know what the hell's wrong with that bottle, but it has just the weirdest texture. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, no. I can't use that. No. Yep. And I put it down. <laughs> And yeah. like, look at, look at, I'm getting goosebumps just yep. thinking about yep. it. Like, I was so like, I was like, funny. oh yep. my God, I can't touch that. Yep. That's, That's right. so funny. We were talking the other That's day right. about, um, I'm watching all these memes or whatever, because we're always talking about, um, neurodivergent stuff. So yeah. my whole feed is full, oh, of, full of that constantly. Good. Yeah. And this, these things that keep coming up are like, um, a, a mom or whatever will showcase all the things that their kid does and then <laughs> and then the dad will be like it's no big deal or whatever and the dad's doing the, the exact doing same it. thing yeah. so like the more they're learning about neurodivergence yes. it's like yeah it's hereditary yeah yeah <laughs> it's, oh, you know yeah. true I and it's beautiful Kelly, it's really beautiful when you start to figure some when of you it start out to see, you're, like, you're like oh, oh my gosh yeah. oh. it took carter coming into our lives for mark right. and i to notice right that we had these little idiosyncrasies oh my god and now and now every day i send you these things i'm I like know. and i love this is them so that, you that one this you is sent you. me the other day <laughs> the high masking oh my god i swear to god i, I was know. like i gotta put that down i i'm sorry that i know this is all uncomfortable right now it's you this all day whole long. New, whole new level. Can't go to Dunkin' Donuts anymore because oh, no. God forbid we not get yeah, that I know because I don't get the same drink that I get. <laughs> I know. But, but again, this is why we work because I'm so flexible. I don't care. My daughter, I swear the other day, I'm like, do you and Carter have fun together? She's like, yeah, when he needs a break, he just needs a break. Yeah. I let him redo what he needs to do and then Right. We pick right back up. That's right. <laughs> Carter goes into his room, spends some time by himself a little while. I play by myself. All of a sudden, Carter comes out and we pick right back up. Right. And, but but again, like, yeah, I'm not raising her to be judgmental. Just right. meet people where they're at. Right. 
be the flexible person. If you don't need, you don't need those needs. Yeah. So give it to the other people. That's yeah. right. The problem is, is That's there right. are a lot of people that are afraid of that approach. There's a That's lot so of people. Sad. I know Erin who... can't share her goddamn French fries. I know she's got to go to the goddamn <laughs> right in the store. Fine. We got to do that. Fine. <laughs> whatever she can't let me drive because she's terrified she's gonna die it just keeps coming up i swear to god i just my whole life just have been someone who's like oh you know just i it just feels better if i do it this way that all of a sudden rebecca comes into my life and she's like sure we gotta go to the right and then i'm like oh didn't realize right in the middle of your presentation in front of all these professionals she's like i give myself freedom fridays and i'm thinking what the fuck is that and she goes Freedom Fridays means I don't need to clean the windows on my shower. And I and I can't help myself. But I'm like, and I said, but I can only do it on Fridays because right. the other days of the week, I cannot allow myself to not squeegee my shower walls. Right. And Rebecca out of nowhere, out loud, <laughs> goes, yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can. You can. You totally can. <laughs> oh, my God. So funny. So we just laugh about these things because but they're funny now. We, now that we're like picking up on it and right. noticing that it's a thing, right. right? But it is, it's hilarious. Yes. But I can, but that's why people can rub each other the wrong way because they just can't. Some people are just, and, it, and I don't even think it's a rigid thing. I don't think you're being rigid. It's just the, the goal, way you do things. You have to remember that no one is fighting the same battles or doing the same things right. that you're doing. Right. And at the end of the day, if we can say, you know what? I believe in you. I have more power and and presence in what it is that you're doing and how can I support you? Mm -hmm. And and less, why are you doing that? That's so weird. You're a shitty parent, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If we can just embrace, ask the why, approach it with curiosity and maybe just trust Mm -hmm. that people are doing the best that they possibly can. Yep. I really feel we'd be living in a a very different world. Don't give advice unless you ask for it. Right. Because... There are so many times where people will give their unsolicited advice and I'm like, thank and you. You want to know, take that a step further. Even when someone asks for advice, mm-hmm. don't hear it as them asking for advice. Mm-hmm. Hear it as them asking for support. Mm-hmm. That's next level mm-hmm. right there. So when you say to me, hey, I got to call you and I got to ask you about what would you do in this situation? Mm-hmm. Instead of me being like, the answer is that mm-hmm. we do this, this and this, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe I say to you, I have so many thoughts about what I could do about that, but what's your first thought? Mm -hmm. What If you had to come up with the answer right now on your own, what would you be thinking? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you in the history of me doing therapy with people, 98% of the time, they are choosing the thing that is most aligned with what it is that they want to do and are going to do anyway. Right. They're wanting to, because of their own anxiety, their own concern, their own confusion, they're wanting to mask that in, can you validate for me that what I'm thinking is correct? Mm-hmm. And if we do a little less, you know, opinion giving. Well, and why a does it have more... to be correct or wrong? Right. I always, I say... There's no right and wrong for anything. There's consequences to all choices, mm-hmm. positive, negative, whatever. Mm-hmm. So you have to be able to choose and stand on that, mm-hmm. whether it's you, whether it's my three-year-old, it, whatever. It's, mm-hmm. I always say that's a choice. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And that's such a great example of hearing what's under mm-hmm. the actual question, mm-hmm. right? So the question is, I need your help validating this. I need your opinion. Mm-hmm. And what we hear under that is... I'm just looking for someone to support me. I'm not feeling confident. I'm feeling like I might make a wrong decision. Mm -hmm. And what if we approached that with, if you couldn't make a mistake here, what would you do? Right. 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 I may not agree with it. And that may not be what I'm going to choose to do. Right. But it's not about me. Absolutely. It's not about me. Right. But absolutely. But when we can't see that and we get caught up in that and we feel real good at the end of the day about making sure that our opinion is heard over other people's opinions, Mm -hmm. whose interests are we really serving? Right. Right. And today with a card. Well, I I wanted to do a a question. Let's do a yes or no question. Okay. Who is the better parent, Aaron or Rebecca? <laughs> oh my God! That's good. She question. didn't even put you in there, Scott. Jeez, that's how yeah, she really feels. Count. You didn't even make the I cut. Did. Who <laughs> has the better approach <laughs> to <Really>? life? <laughs> no, ask it a yes or no question. Okay, Scott, give us a yes or no question. What's a good? It can yes be or no stupid. Question? Who cares? 
Wait, I have to come up with the question? Well, I don't know, because I couldn't. So I just put it on you, so I felt better. I'm, I'm too... Um, Concent- I'm concentrating on the fact that I've had to urinate really badly for the last <laughs> oh, wow. 20 minutes. It's not going to be his pants. His pants. So, am I going to piss my pants, yes or no? Oh my God, what could we ask? What could we ask? Um, Is the world going to move more toward being open, curious, and supportive when people are looking for insight as opposed to opinionated and righteous I can and answer that right now. clear? Oh, you're asking the cards? We're asking the We're cards. We're asking, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, because I know the answer, but go ahead. <laughs> so the Eight of Swords came up. Great. The Eight of Swords, and it's called the Restriction. Good. That's woo, great. Woo, my paws. That's, like, that's the great. The yeah, Okay. Great. Eight of Swords. Eight means change. And this eight sees you on the brink of that change as you realize the way you're being restricted by your circumstances. At work, in a relationship or project, the card often shows a relationship on lockdown because one of you is not free to make a commitment. An additional meaning is being bound by too much responsibility. Advice. Get practical and see that you are in control of your own future, regardless of what others think. You can free yourself by being less tolerant of demands of others. Stop it. Is that for real? And then listen to this affirmation card. Mm-hmm. I know that my deepest desires are the pathway pathways toward my dreams. I'm going where it feels right. Mm-hmm. To the right. <laughs> <laughs> it's always to the right. Always to the right. In Hobby and Lobby. Unless, <laughs> unless. Where's the one we don't go to the right? <laughs> Kirkland's. <laughs> Kirkland's is to the no, line. not Kirkland. It was a Christmas tree shop. Oh, yeah. But that's closed now. Shop. So that's right. We don't that's go there right. anymore. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> always to the right. <laughs> always. <laughs> Have a good day. I loved that. Me too. Isn't empathy amazing? Well, we're amazing. I don't know about all this empathy stuff. That's fine. I accept you wherever you are. Oh, God. I love you. I love you too. And if you love us, please like and subscribe to More Love, the Power of Empathy podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. <laughs>